This is your gun, right? That's right. I, I admit that. I admit it. And ballistics said this gun killed two people. That's right. They should have done what they was told. And there were three guys with you, right? Well, there was nobody. Don't lie to me. It's that's all right there. Nobody. Look, all we want to do is help you. Make it easier for you. Talk. You know what's good for you. Talk. I don't want to make you talk. Look, I'm telling you, we're trying to help you. Making it easier on you. There were three guys. Bud Corsi, Frank DiGiotto, Bill Morgan. Describe him. Was maybe 45, black hair, a little gray, big in the chest, 5'10, 170. Did you do? Skinny, uh, six foot, maybe 150. Blonde. What about Morgan? Uh, he was older, 55, gray, 165, 170. What'd you do with the getaway car? Uh, North Park, near the kids' playground. Who was first in the cashier's cage? Uh, I was. What kind of gun did Gerardo carry? German Luger. Where'd your partners go? Boy went to Chicago, Frank went to St. Louis, and uh, Bill went to Des Moines. Why would you hang on to a hard gun? I didn't want to maybe have to go out and buy another one. Well, he's got a story down, let it perfect. Mm -hmm. Now all we have to do is get him arrested. What is this, Miss Lincoln? I carry it for protection. A single girl walking around alone in a neighborhood like this? Eighty-seven Squad, Detective Corella. I'm sorry, Miss Laker, but Mr. Ramsey said you slugged and robbed him. He identified you. Take her. Where to? We're booking you. I'm innocent. Look at me. I got friends downtown. I'll have you fixed. I'm going to have you walking up and down in a tunnel. I'm a citizen. I got my rights. Fire. Pick up on three. Would you repeat that, please? Take my word for it. He's at 433 South 18th Street, apartment three. Why don't you make yourself heroes and pick him up? Me? I'm just a public spirited citizen. I figured it was my duty to be helpful. Let's get out of here. No, wait. I want to make sure they took our tip seriously. In 20 seconds, somebody ought to be coming out of that station house. What do you think? Well, I'm not generally sold on anonymous tips. Neither am I. We gotta check it out anyway. 
Well, you know, if the tip is on the up and up, you might go to reception. I better go along. All right. Jack, catch for me, Luis. Back. I'm familiar with tenement yards. Boyhood experience. Janitor, mister, I wanted to check on a leaking water pipe. Oh, forget it. I'm, I'm sleeping now. Forget it. Your gun killed the two men in the supermarket. Now, what'd you do with the rest of the money? 50,000 was stolen. There's only 10 grand here. All I got is my split. Oh, you got more than that, Greg. You got a name. Greg Grobain. That's, that's kind of an illustrious name. Huh? How about your buddies? They got names as famous as yours? I didn't have no buddies. Don't lie to me. You just said all you got was your split. Split with who? Now, come on. It'll be a lot easier if you open up, Greg. Why don't you be sensible, Provane? Why don't you let us help you, huh? Come on, try us. Do you want to make things easier for yourself? But of course he Frank the John of Bill Morgan. That was a real good strike, Greg. Really rang the bell this time. That's right. That's right, I rang the bell, and I'll tell you, there was a lot of guys that was better than I couldn't make it. Sure, your old man would be proud of you. Hey, he knew. My old man, he knew. He knew from way back. He knew I had it. Hey, give me a seat, huh? What'd you do with the getaway car? North Park. Near the kids' playground. You ready to sign a confession? Oh, you got me called. Sure, I'm gonna sign one. I'm gonna fight with you. Sign it. Yeah. Tell me about the two guys you shot. They should have done what they was told. Send in a stenographer. How about your buddies? They old friends? I knew them. Good guys. I mean, they were good to me. Smart. Are you kidding? Were they smart? Listen, the 
first time, the very first time they spotted me, they knew what I was. They know I'm not a two-bird hood. You know what Corsi said to Desiato? He says, let's get the kid. Get him. He's got a lot of guts. Get him. He'll help us. Are you kidding? I overheard the whole thing. He says, uh, that kid, he's got no business, uh, you know, uh, grabbing a little liquor store, scuffling around for peanuts, grab him, take him with us, blow him up. Yeah, you sure were scuffling, weren't you? You got a long record, Greg. All misses and no hits. Well, all right, then they didn't come along, you see. These guys, they give me my big break. Pull me up. You don't look like such a big shot to me. Take a walk, will you? You got a job, you work for the city. Yeah, your old man now, he was a big shot, old Dan. That's right. That's right, my old man was big. He was the biggest, and I'll tell you something. My old man, if he had a hip break right now, he'd have this whole town wrapped up. He'd be paying you off, you off, the whole outfit, paying them off. Yeah, he forgot one thing, the cops carry guns, too. It took four cops to get my old man for four years. It only took two cops to get you. All right, let's start at the top, Greg. You just tell them your own words. In my own words? Yeah. Oh, why not? Well, Bud, uh, listen, that's Greg, not Dan. I don't want him to get him mixed up with the old man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Greg Grove, man. Uh... Of course, he knocked off the car that we used. You see, the whole job that was all cased ahead of time before they dealt me in. You know what the general said to me when he brought me in? What? He said to me, he says, Greg, he says, you're not a candy store hood. We know that. He says, you like the way you handle yourself. You're like a pro. Well, anyway, we all got into the car around 11 o'clock. We drove off to the manager's office, and uh, I was the first one in. Greg should be real happy we made him a big man. Like father, like son. A chip off the old block, that's our boy Greg. <laughs> boy, that confession. Hey, the Yanks just went ahead by a run. Listen, I still don't believe that guy ain't gonna talk. I don't care what you believe. The point is he believes he killed those two men. Now, why would anybody want to believe something like that? Look, I've been through this a dozen times with you two guys. Now, the thing with Brovain is, he wants to believe more than anything in the world. He wants to believe he's going to pull that job. Okay. Okay. So Brovain thinks he did it. But what about us, huh? You think he's going to keep giving the cops free phony guys for us? Why don't you keep eating? You make more sense with your mouth full. Brovain doesn't even remember us. He'll keep repeating exactly what I told him to say. When I hypnotize, they stay hypnotized. We don't even have to leave town. It's cooker. It's science. We plan the whole job right here. And we plan for Greg. Crime shouldn't pay. Somebody has to take the rap. OK, OK. I appreciate the guy taking a rap for me. Maybe I can do something for him sometime. <laughs> You're laughing at the wrong joke. Huh? The best part of the whole thing is the cops are looking for three guys that don't even exist. Gotta stop. But I like to give candy to kids. Well, I know, but you can't do it anymore. It's the only thing I got left. Kids liking me and, and talking to me. But one of these times, Sammy, they won't call the police. Some guy who won't know that you just like kids is going to get excited. It's kind of sad, ain't it? Yeah, it is kind of sad. But some people will misunderstand, no matter what we do. So you stop it. No more candy for kids. OK, Sammy, you can go. Sammy! Lemon drops. The kids still like them the best. Tough being an old man. It's not so easy being a young one. Well, what's your problem? Well, the Brevain case. I checked Chicago, St. Louis, Des Moines. They never even heard of the names Brevain gave us. There were two witnesses to the hold up. What about them? The 8th Precinct conducted the original investigation. They came up dry. Well, somebody got to have seen those two guys, or at least heard the shots. 
Well, shooting sort of discourages witnesses. They don't volunteer. Listen to this. A good heist is pulled. Two men are killed. We pick up a guy on a tip with part of the money he confesses. He names his accomplices. Three guys. He gives us good, detailed descriptions of them. Only they're ghosts. It's probably amateurs. There's no record. Come on, Meyer. It wasn't an amateur job. All right, so Greg Brovane is a genius. Yeah, that'll be the day, too. Greg Brovane has been a fumbler for the past 10 years. He's been picked up every time he sneezed. Look, the district attorney isn't complaining about the Brovane case, is he? No, 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 no. All right, so what's bothering you? Well, the humidity, I guess. That and that handy anonymous phone tip. Look, Steve, we got Brovane, 87th got the credit. And we'll catch up with the other three guys. Uh, sooner or later, they'll pop up. They always do. Hey, where are you going? Well, on second thought, I'm going to help the popping up process. What do you mean? Well, I never did think the guys from the 8th Precinct knew how to get information from a witness. Yeah, I heard the shots all right. I was draining the crankcase of this car, and the drain plug was chewed up. Wouldn't come loose. Then my wrench slips and cuts my hand. I begin to get sore. Finally, I work the drain plug loose. I look up, and the car's pulling away. Should have looked sooner, I guess. I read you got one of them guys, though. Yeah. One down, three to go. Yes, sir. You see, the doctor told me that I should take a little wine every day. It helps me digest. Without it, everything I eat sits right there, just like lead it sits there. The wine helps me digest. I have to try it myself. I got the same problem. Now, on the day of the robbery, oh, I was having terrible trouble digesting. I took two trips to the liquor store. Now, you said you heard the shots. Yes, sir, and I knew what they were right away from television. Some shows have had better sounds than others. You take that M squad. Well, they got great shots. Yes, ma'am. I noticed that myself. Very, very authentic. Yes, yeah, just like life. Well, sir, I was coming from the store. I heard the shot. I saw the hold-up men okay. Yes, sir, I saw them. Clear as a bell. Do you wear glasses? Never in my whole life. I got 20-20 in both eyes. There's never been nothing wrong with me. I just don't digest so good. And what these men look like? Like businessmen. That's what hit me. Like businessmen coming from a conference. I know that from television. What'd they do? They got in the car and they rode away. One got behind the wheel, the other got beside him, and the other one was in the back. Three men? Did I say three? Well, that's what it adds up to. Two in the front, one in the back. I know. <laughs> it could have been four. But you said three. Well, I wasn't counting. I was just talking. Well, try counting now, huh? Look, sir, my indigestion's coming back on me. Now, look. Was this one of them? Could be. Looks like a businessman, too. Let's try it one more time. Do you remember three men or four men? I told you what I remembered. It could be either. Mrs. Turner, I'm trying to get a lead on these men. It's very important. Could you identify them if you saw them? All I can tell you is I know whether a man's a businessman or a crook. Now, will that help you? You're absolutely right, Mrs. Turner. You don't digest so good. <laughs> Reporter, I'll take care of it. Mrs. Provane. Who are you? Well, I'm not a reporter. Detective Corella, 87th Precinct. I wonder if I could talk to you for a moment, please. Okay. This is Mrs. Brovane, my mother. I I'm Peggy Brovane. Mom, this is the police. Detective Corella. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Brovane? We thought it might be another reporter. You want to sit down? Thanks, I'll stand. Um, the reporter's been bothering you? They were. Now it looks like it's the police. No, this is just routine, Miss Burpan. About Greg? Mm -hmm. Please, officer. Mom, I'll handle this. We've had trouble in this family. All our lives, 
one kind or another. For a while, we, we were able to live quietly. Nobody bothered us. Nobody was around to, to dig up the past. Oh, oh, I, I don't feel any shame about the past or the present, because it has nothing to do with me. But my mother does, and, and I'm going to protect her. I understand, Miss Brevain, and I sympathize, but... Then what are you doing here? Uh, Miss Brevain, your, your brother told us who his accomplices were. He named them. He gave us a full description of them, but we can't seem to locate them. I mean, we can't even find a, a record on them. Any friend my brother ever made had a record. These don't. I, I can't believe my brother was going around with a better class of people. We thought you might be able to help us, to give us some kind of a lead. Greg left home when he was 18, Mr. Corella. And nobody cried. Stop it, Peggy. You make us sound like... like animals. Without any... Mom, forgive me. Please, Mom. I, I, I'm sorry for him, too. Believe me, I, I'm sorry for him, too. And sorry for Greg? Why? Because his father was Dan Bravain. And Greg loved his father. It's a good thing to love somebody, Mr. Corella. The best thing. But Greg never had a chance. To start with, he's... Well, you know how he is. Please go away, Mr. Corella. All my mother and I want is to be left alone. Then you don't know any of Greg's friends? No. Once in a while, my, my son would call and... I told him never to come here. We have a life of our own to live. Look at it now. It's a circus with, with reporters and photographers. And the police. All right. All right, Mr. Corelli. If we can help you, we will. What are the names of the men that were with Greg? Bud Corsi. Frank DeJardo, Bill Morbin. I never heard of any of them. Wait, a about a month ago, Greg met me as I was leaving the office. He, he needed some money. That's the only time I ever see him, when he needs money. He said he'd pay me back. He, he had met a new friend, someone who was going to give him a break. No name. No name. Well, we tried. I know this has been unpleasant for you, and I hope we won't have to bother you again. How come you didn't get caught? Being Dan Bravain's daughter? Mm -hmm. When I found out what he was, I, I hated him. But Greg, he, he wanted to be like him. And now he is, isn't he? Greg, Greg, you poor, dumb, unlucky kid. Five front pages. Where'd I get this picture? Look at that. How well, lucky can you get him? What do you mean, lucky? Well, I did it tonight. That's more what you could say. Yeah. Greg, when are you going to start playing ball with me? What do you mean? Well, you're holding on on me. That's what I mean. No, I'm not. I thought I gave you everything. Well, you're holding on on me. Look, three guys, you give me their names, their descriptions, and I keep coming up dry. So no. I've got to figure you're holding on them. That's not true. I gave you everything that I know. I'm going to shake it out of you, Greg. Listen, so what are you getting rough for? I ain't got nothing to Here's tell you. There's a picture in the paper. You think you're a real big man now, don't you? You know what I think? 
I think you're a sucker, Greg. A fall guy, a patsy. Just don't call me them names. Those buddies Nobody ears. Calls you're me. real fond of those buddies' ears, aren't you? That's yeah. right. That's right. They're the best, yeah, those oh, boys. Oh, great friends. Sure. Well, I'll tell you what I think they did. I think they sold you down the river. That's what I think. Ah. They served you up like a turkey, like a slab of white meat. Ah, they sold you out, Greg. Not true. You know how we picked you up? You know how we picked you up? An anonymous phone tip. And I'll bet my money your buddy sent it in. That's not true. I'll give Shut you up. odds they stooled on you and left you holding the bag, Greg. Get out of your mind. Uh, that's not who true. Who else could it have been? I don't know, but that's not true. Who else could it have been, Greg? You're saving their necks. You're in here and they're out there. You're a sucker, Greg. They're not your buddies. They're rats. Right, get out of here. Hey, you're going to burn Listen, for them, aren't you? You're going to sit here stuff. and burn get for them. Big Mr. Lloyd. Get out of here. You're going to be get laughing. Out of here. Laugh. I don't want to hear you anymore. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Let me get this straight. You want the district attorney's office to postpone the grand jury hearing in the Brovane case? Right. Well, we can't just juggle a calendar around. We're jammed up as it is. All right, you go ahead with what you've got, Nate, and you're only going to bat a single. What do you mean? All we've got is Brovane. You mean you haven't got the others yet? No. Well, why not? You had the names, you had the descriptions. Well, I didn't have their addresses, Nate. See, so what do you guys do at that department? Play gin rummy? <laughs> yeah, we're almost as good as you are. All right, all right. Oh, look, Nate, just give me a little more time. There's a chance you'll have them all. All I want to do is load the bases, bring everybody home. So how are you going to do that, Coach? Oh, I got an idea. Well, I admit it would look better to go into the grand jury room with a full team and not just Bravain. Then we postpone. All right. Game called on account of rain. Thanks, Nate. <laughs> Mr. Borgman. Mrs. Pender, how are you? Well, I'm just fine, thanks. I, uh, I was just tidying up a little bit. Not that you and Mr. Boudreau and Mr. Tremaine need it. You're all so neat. That's because it's like home to us here, Mrs. Pender, a real home. Oh, that's what I want it to be, a home. I got a surprise for you. Sit down. Oh, uh, for you. Mr. Borgman, you shouldn't have. It's my pleasure. Well, I mean, it's not good for me. I, I am trying to lose some weight, but... Ooh, nuts and jellies. My favorite. Like you said, uh, you want this to be a real home? I do the same thing for my mother. <laughs> I got as big as a house. But it was thoughtful of you. Hey, Tully, Tully, we're in trouble. Mrs. Pender, we have some business to talk over. Oh, of course, of course. And this is with our good wishes. Oh, you, you're such wonderful boys, just like my son. Thank you, Mrs. Pender. Thank you. Something's gone wrong, Tully. Go on, read it. They postponed the grand jury hearing. I told you that your gag about hypnotizing this punk to take the rap would backfire. I told you that this stupid punk would be nothing but trouble. Shut up. Look, well, let's get out of town. Matty. Yeah, Tully. Get over and find out what's going on. What's holding things up? Why they're stalling? And you relax. Get off the panic button. The cops don't even know we exist. Okay. And remember, walk. Don't run to the nearest exit. Up. Sometimes I wonder about you. Who's more stupid, Greg Bravain or you? All right. So I'm a warrior. Will you relax? We made a nice hit. We got good money. Play along. Don't come running in here shooting off your mouth. Okay, Tully. But don't ask me not to worry. It's not natural. Go ahead and eat. Just learn to shut up. With guys like you, silence is golden. Polygraph, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he's holding something back. Maybe a lie detector test would prove it. Doesn't make sense. Gives us names, descriptions, we come up empty. Well, maybe we're not as good as we think we are. All right, we're pretty good. Mm. You want to do the polygraph now? No. There's only one problem. 
You gotta get Greg Bovane's consent. Yeah, last time I talked to him, we had sort of a minor disagreement. So how do we swing him? You want a tip? Yeah, anything. What? Greg Bovane is off the front pages. He's out of the limelight. Now, publicity is our poison, but it's Greg Bovane's meat. You're a genius. Come on. Huh? some bad news for you, Greg. What? You're off the front page, sonny boy. You faded. You've had it. You're yesterday's news. That's a big fat paper. Look in the back. You'll find it. There's a little item back there. Fill it. What happened? What are they doing to me? I guess they're through with you, Greg. Well, who's they? Listen, somebody's trying to stab me in the back. I killed two guys, didn't I? Yeah, you killed two guys, and... Dan Brovane's boy, but he was on top how long? Five years, ten years? You? Five, six days. Well, I guess some guys got it and some guys ain't. Go ahead. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Come here. I'm all confused about this. I don't understand what's... A... Did you give him all the information? I gave him everything, yeah. Hey, look, pal, do me a favor. You know who's in back of this, don't you? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if we give him a polygraph test? Might work. What's that? The polygraph test. It's a lie detector test. Yeah, but I didn't throw no lies. Well, maybe you forgot something. You get you back on the newspapers. Yeah, they cover you like a beauty queen. Greg Bovane takes lie detector tests. You'd make all the front pages. Sure. All of them. How long can I take it? No. <laughs> one in the manager's office? Yes. Did DiGiotto carry a German Luger? Yes. Did Bud go to Chicago? Yes. Did Frank go to St. Louis? Yes. Did Bill go to Des Moines? Yes. Right? I mean, the whole thing's gonna be the headlines, yeah, right? Sure, you're tomorrow's news, Greg. Well, what are you brushing me off? That's what I went in there. The man said yes. You'll be in the papers. Well, everything checks, Corello. One point is clear. That young man is certainly truthful. Unusually truthful, I'd say. You see, most people generally show a little reaction from time to time as they hide things, change them. You mean he was telling the truth? He wasn't holding back anything? Well, according to the polygraph test I just gave him, I can only conclude he was hiding nothing. There's not a thing, not a single thing he's holding out. I believe the entire substance of his confession is true. Oh. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming down here and putting yourself out. My pleasure. Uh, you want to keep this? Yeah. Yeah, the DA may want to call you as an expert witness. Right. Night. Right. Good night. Well, now what? No, nothing. I guess there must be a Bud Corsi, a Frank DeJato, and a Bill Morvan. I guess these three guys must really exist. You know something about Greg Bovane? What about Greg Bovane? He's the most truthful hood we ever caught. In the face of that, I guess this is where I give up.
What's up? It's gonna happen. It's morning and it's working. What's working? What are you talking about? They're sending Greg to the grand jury. It ain't been announced yet, but that's what they're doing. Are you sure? It'll be in the next edition of the papers. The cops are giving up. They're going to the post with what they've got. Well, one thing's certain. We packed a winner. Yeah, named Greg Brovain. And you know who's riding? Charlie Borgman, the jockey of the year. <laughs> Transcript number one, the confession he made to us. Transcript number two, the confession he made to the DA. Transcript number three, the polygraph test. And they stink. They all stink. But he's gone to the grand jury in two days on the basis of these confessions. Meyer, well, I've been a cop for 15 years. I've never seen three confessions exactly alike. They're like confession by root. The same words, not a detail change. It bugs me. But the grand jury will buy it. Well, I don't. These things aren't human. It's like a machine made them. Only certain unvarying facts will come out. It's not normal. In other words, you feel that something is missing. Oh, I sure do. I wish I could figure a way to start breaking down this machine. 87 Squad, Detective Carrillo. Yeah. Yeah, sure. We'll be right over. Vane is yelling his head off. Corella. Get me, Corella. Get him down here. Get Corella down here. Hey, Corella! I am here. Get down here. I'm here, all right. Get out of here. I'm going to talk to you over here. There's nothing in the paper. What? So you promised me a headline. Where is it? It's up to there. I looked through everything. It's up to there. Oh, Corelli, he tells me. You take a test, I'll fix you up. I'll get you in the newspaper. Well, Corelli, you're a liar. See, that Corelli, he's a liar, but that's all right. I'll fix him because I know something that he don't know. You see, they'll have get him. He's going crazy. Corelli, you're all right. You hear me? Don't ever lie to me. Maybe don't your machine is beginning to break down. Where's the stuff in the newspaper? Let's get Doug Daniels down here. Maybe a psychiatrist can figure him out. Carolla, where's it in the paper? What am I going to tell my old man? What am I going to tell him? I got nothing to tell him. Well, you boys, quiet now. We can talk. Then did you read these confessions? Yeah, they're fascinating. Sound like carbon copies of each other. Yeah. Still, your polygraph test showed him to be absolutely truthful. Yeah. Ben, look. It is unnatural for a man to make three confessions and not change one detail now, isn't it? Yes. All right. Now, he described his accomplices to us very fully. He named them, and we can't even get a line on them. So what's the truth in this case? That's what makes it fascinating. Is there any way the polygraph can be wrong, Doc? No, Meyer, not at the level of his conscious mind. I'd hate to even consider Greg Bovane's subconscious. <laughs> Many men are more interesting at that level. Bovane could be telling the absolute truth at the conscious level. But at the subconscious level, it could all very well be a lie. How would you tap his subconscious level? Hypnotic drugs. Scopolamine, for one. Under such treatment, the real truth would come out if there is any. One question, Ben. Shoot. What would make a man confess to two murders and a robbery and believe it to be a fact, even if there wasn't any truth at all in it? Well, several things could do it. Drugs, old-fashioned brainwashing, psychological hallucination, and, of course, hypnosis. That's what makes the real truth so hard to find. It's a fact. One thing, sure, these things aren't any good to us anymore. Not after he blew his stack, no grand jury would even try him. Mentally unstable, so he gets clean away, and so does the truth. Ben. Could you administer the scopolamine test? I'm getting interested in his subconscious. I'd be delighted if you can get his consent. Well, he said yes to the polygraph. That was one kettle of fish. This is another. Don't look at me. You wouldn't do it for me. You'd better see me dead first. Take it easy. 
Daisy, don't, don't fall apart on me, Peggy. It's, it's just that I'm nervous, that's all. Well, you want to help us, don't you? Oh, yes, yes, it's... I, I, I don't know how, I don't know what to do. I just remember what Doc Daniels told you. The shortest distance between two people is love and kindness. Understand? You know, all my life I've avoided the responsibility. I guess it's caught up with me at last. Oh. I am my brother's keeper. Greg? Oh, yeah? Okay, then. Well, how are you? Oh, well, fine. How are you? Oh, fine. Hey, how's, how's Mom? Oh, she's okay. Hey, want to sit down? Come here, sit down. Hey, so how's everything? Tell me, how's the job, everything? We were worried about you, Greg. Oh, don't worry about me, Peg. Everything's all right. They respect me. They know what I'm doing. M Mom was saying... Oh, no, no. Tell Ma to relax. It's okay. Greg, I I'm worried about you. I don't want you to worry. Listen, I'm worried about you. I'm your big brother, and I am going to take care of you. I am, Peg. I'm going to take care of you. Remember when we was kids? Who used to take care of you? We used to watch you over you, right? Remember when the guys used to come around and tease you? What did I used to say? I said, hey, come on. Hey, take a walk. Hey, my kid says that I'm watching her. And I want your body with the red hair. What's his name, Jimmy? I had to give him a good rap that day because he wouldn't stop. That's one thing, boy. When we was kids, we had a good time. Greg, I just don't believe you did it. I just don't believe you killed those two okay. men. I did it. Honest, I did it. I was the guy. I walked in there and I told the guy, look, just stay in there and be quiet. You won't get hurt. Well, the guy wouldn't shut up and I gave it to him. And we got in the car and we drove off. Don't worry about that. I did it. What are you crying for? Don't cry. Oh, Greg, I want you to do something for me. I will, Peg. I'll do anything you want. They want you to take a test. Test? Well, I already took a test. Greg, you've got to do it. You've got to do it for me. I will. Okay, Peg. I will. I'll do it. Okay? Talk about the supermarket job. Tell us what happened. Tully. He gave me. Uh, Who's Tully? Tully Borgman. And what did Tully Borgman do? He promised he'd make me be somebody. Make me be like my old man. He said he'd make people recognize me. Who pulled the supermarket job? Tully. Matty and Clay. Matty and Clay. What are their last names? Clay. Boudreaux. Matty Tremaine. What did you have to do with the robbery, Greg? Nothing. They just promised to help me be somebody. In return, I was... I... Tully, he... He may not remember what they did to him. Greg, did you shoot the guards? No. I wasn't there. They uh, wouldn't trust me to come along. They just promised to help me. Well, why did you confess to the robbery? I didn't confess. No confession. Greg, did you ever kill anyone? No. Describe Tully. Nice 
guy. Smart. A lot of ideas. I mean, describe him physically. What does he look like? Thirty-eight, maybe. Short, black hair. Nice guy. Red things. Gonna help me. Greg, where was the last place you saw Tully Borgman? They're losing. The Yanks just went behind. They'll win. Champs always win. When the chips are down, you can put your money on the Yanks. Clay. Get it. I got a message for Bud, Bud, Bud Corsi, and he's... It's for Bay! They let him go! I told you you lousy guy would work our pitch and our patsy, they let him go! Grab him! Hey, hey, what are you doing here? It's the cops! Well, thanks for helping us, Tully. He doesn't know who you are. He's still hypnotized. You can come in now. Hey, what do you say, Peg? Hi, Greg. Well, you can check him now, Steve. money was taken on the supermarket robbery. What robbery? The supermarket robbery. I don't know what you're talking about. Hypnosis can be reversed, Steve. That's what I've done. Wiped his mind clean. Well, we're not going to press charges, Greg, so that's it. You can go. Except for coming in twice a week for treatment, huh? Let's go. Thanks, Mr. Grill. Oh, don't forget, you did us a favor, too. Come on. Greg, good, good luck to you. Right. Well, psychiatric treatment may help him, Steve. Get the idea out of his head, he's got to be a better hood than his father was. At least make him understand why he feels that way and how sick he is. Well, Ben, that is a big help because I'll tell you, we got our hands full with the guys who are trying to make it on their own without taking on the ones who are trying to top their fathers. One of these days, I'm going to have to put you through analysis. See if I can find out exactly why you have to be so sure on every one of your arrests. Well, that's not so tough. No, Ben, I have to be very sure about everything because, you see, my father... Well, my father wore both a belt and suspender. 